Hi, writing class. Excellent work yesterday writing your stories. Great job remembering to start a new paragraph each time a new person spoke. And nice work using your checklist and your vocabulary words to help you write your stories. So keep up the awesome work. For today's class, we're going to be looking at lesson 38, parts A, B, and C. So let's get started. So let's look at part A. Four sentences in part A need commas because they begin with a part that tells when, where, if, although, or unless. So we need to remember, guys, if a sentence begins with a part that tells when, where, if the sentence begins with the word if, although, or unless, that sentence will need to have a comma. So let's look at part A. We have seven sentences. So let's read through all of them. And then you're going to have to figure out which four of those seven sentences will need to have a comma. So in order to help you, remember if any of these sentences begin with a part that tells when or where, or if you see the words if, although, or unless at the beginning of the sentences, that means you'll have to add a comma. So I want you guys to try part A on your own, and then you can pause the video Remember, four of the seven sentences will need to have commas, and then I'll see you guys in part B. So welcome back to part B. The writer forgot to punctuate sentences that tell the exact words that somebody said. So your job is going to be to read the passage. Fix up the sentences that tell the exact words that somebody said. So here is the first paragraph for you. We'll edit the first one together, and then you guys will have four other paragraphs to edit. So once again, we need to add in our missing punctuation marks and our quotation marks. So first, let's read through this whole paragraph. As Jessica ran into the room, she threw up her arms and yelled, Our team won the game. We are the champs. Right, so we're going to want to put our quotation marks around the exact words that Jessica said. So as Jessica ran into the room, she threw up her arms and yelled, our team won the game, right? So I'm going to put my opening quotation mark right here because Jessica said our team won the game, right? I'm not going to put my closing quotation mark yet because she said more than one sentence. She said, she also said, we are the champs. So after this sentence, I'm going to put my closing quotation marks. Right, so the exact words that Jessica said were, our team won the game, we are the champs. We're missing two more things. So we have our quotation marks around the exact words that Jessica said, but we need to remember that right before the quotation mark, we need to have a comma. So right after the word yelled, I'm going to add in my comma. One more thing that we're missing is we need to remember that whatever's in the pair in the quotation marks has to begin with a capital letter. So this O here is not a capital. So I'm going to cross it out or you can erase it and put a capital O. So what it should say now is as Jessica ran into the room, she threw up her arms and yelled, comma, opening quotation mark, capital O, our team won the game period. And then the second sentence, she said, we are the champs, period. And then my closing quotation marks. So what I want you guys to do now is read the other four paragraphs and also put in any missing punctuation marks, quotation marks, commas, or capital letters. If it's a question, don't forget to also add in your question mark. So you guys can pause the video now, and then I'll see you in part C. So welcome back to part C. This will be our final part for today's lesson. So for part C, we're going to be writing a multi-paragraph story. So I'll read what it says in the pictures. So let's find part C on your paper. The pictures in part C show how the story begins and how it ends, but the pictures don't show what happened between the beginning and the ending. So once again, if you look at your sheet, you have your first picture, which shows what happens at the beginning of the story. And then you have your 
last picture which shows what happened at the end of the story. We don't have any pictures that show what happened in the middle of the story. So your job is going to be to make up the middle part. Let's read the first sentence that goes at the beginning of our story. Once again, it'll be the sentence that is written in the first box. It says, Zorko watched as Ted and Kevin examined their spaceship. So that will be the sentence for the beginning of your story. There are also three speakers in the first picture. So that means your first paragraph or your first part of your story will need to have at least three paragraphs, right? We have Zorko, we have Ted, and we have Kevin. Since each one of these people are saying exact words, that means we're gonna have to have a separate paragraph for each of these speakers. So in our first part, we're going to want to write our beginning sentence. Maybe we'll describe what's happening and then we'll write a, a paragraph or about what each person said. Then if we look, we have the beginning of the next part of our story, right? Zorko walked up to Ted and Kevin. This will be the second part of our story and it will tell how Zorko helped Ted and Kevin. So the sentence for that, the second part of our story will be, Zorko walked up to Ted and Kevin. Then let's look at the picture and that shows what happened at the end of the story, right? We see that they helped them fix their spaceship and they were able to fly away. But we can also see that Zorko got some help from some of his friends. So we're gonna wanna include that in our story. The middle part of your story should answer the questions that are in the box. I'll read the questions. What did Zorko say to De Ted and Kevin? Were Ted and Kevin surprised when they saw Zorko? Who fixed the spaceship? How did they fix the spaceship? What did Ted and Kevin say when they climbed into their fixed spaceship? So if your story answers these questions, it will be an interesting story. Your story does not have to answer all of those questions. They're just there to help you write your story. We also have some keywords on the bottom to help us when writing our story. We have the words antenna, repaired, crane, crashed, landed, explained, damaged, and upright. And we also have four checks. Check one says, is each sentence punctuated correctly? So we wanna make sure that our sentences are beginning with a capital letter and have some kind of end mark at the end. We need to make sure that all of our, the exact words that were spoken are in quotation marks. Part or check two asks us, are there any unclear words in your paragraphs? Remember, before we can use the words he, she, they, them, we have to first introduce the person or people or the object. Check three asks us, did you tell all the important things that must have happened? So we're gonna want to use those questions and the two pictures to help us write our story. And then check four asks us, did you write at least five paragraphs? For the first half of our story, right, we need to have at least three paragraphs because there are three separate people speaking. And then in the last part or the second half of your story, you have to have at least two paragraphs. So using all of this information, we're going to write our story. So we'll write the first half of the story about this first box and this together. And then I want you guys to write the second half of your story using these questions and this picture to help you. So we're gonna write the first sentence that's given to us. Remember, when we're starting a, a paragraph, we need to remember to indent. So our first sentence will be Zorko watched as Ted and Kevin examined their spaceship. So once again, this first sentence for the first half of our story is given to us. 
Notice I remembered to indent. And then don't forget that people's names always have to begin with a capital letter. Right? So looking at this picture, we're going to want to describe what happened. We can see that their spaceship crashed and was damaged. So that will be our next sentence. However, I've already introduced the spaceship here. Since it's the only object that I mentioned, I can begin my next sentence with the word it. That way, it'll be clear and it'll only refer to the word spaceship. So it crashed and was damaged. So crashed and damaged, if you look on the bottom of your sheet, are two of our key words. So we want to make sure to use some of those words in our story. So now what I want to do is we have three separate people speaking. I still haven't had anybody say anything. So my first person that speaks will just continue with this first paragraph. I'm going to start with what Kevin said. So I'm going to write Kevin said, then I'm going to put my comma, quotation marks, and begin with a capital T. Right, he said the engines were destroyed when we landed, period, closing quotation marks. Just like that, right? It can still be part of my first paragraph because no one else has spoken. So I said, Kevin said, comma, quotation marks, capital T, the engines were destroyed when we landed, period, and then my closing quotation marks. Next, I'm going to want to write what Ted said. So in order to do that, since a new person is speaking, I'm not going to continue. I'm going to start a new paragraph. So right here, I'm going to indent and write what Ted said. So I'll write Ted said, comma, quotation marks, will never get off this planet. Closing quotation marks. So right, since now Ted is speaking, I had to start a new paragraph. And then Ted said, comma, quota uh, quotation marks, capital W will never get off this planet, period, closing quotation marks. All that's left is to write what Zorko said. So once again, what you're going to want to do is start a new paragraph, indent, and you can write, Zorko said, those humans need help. And you're going to write the words, those humans need help, in quotation marks. Then for the second half of your story, they give you the first sentence to write. Zorko walked up to Ted and Kevin. So you're going to want to include that in the second half of your story. Then using the questions that are provided in the third box, you're going to write two more paragraphs, as well as what is here in this picture. So guys, and then make sure to use some of these words and then your four checks. So what I want you guys to do is we wrote the first half of the story together. We wrote three paragraphs. Well, we wrote two, but we talked about the third. Then you're going to want to start with Zorko walked up to Ted and Kevin and then finish off your par the rest of the story using those questions and the last picture to help you. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. You're doing an awesome job and I'll see you in our next lesson.